Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. And it's been a little while since I've done just a good old fashioned cake tutorial. And as per usual, I will be including my pricing guide for this cake at the end of the video. So firstly, I'm just starting out with a simple vanilla cake. This is the vanilla cake that I use very, very often, and I'm using my Italian meringue buttercream. In between each layer, I am going to be putting in some of that simple syrup, which is just a one-to-one -one ratio of warm water and granulated sugar. And while this cake recipe is very moist and it's not dry at all, because I'm not sure when this entire cake is going to be consumed, I need to place that simple syrup in there just so that you get a little bit more time out of your cake. Now I realize that I don't often include a lot of this information in my videos, so I'm going to start trying to do that. This cake is a six inch cake that I'm working on, and I'm also working on an eight inch cake. So in the end, it's going to be a six inch and eight inch stacked. By the way, you might have noticed that I did actually crumb coat my six inch cake on a plate. I so do not recommend that. The only reason that I had to do it that way is because I ran out of eight inch cake boards. So I really recommend that you do it on a flat surface if you can, because the plate makes it really difficult to actually take that cake off later on. So definitely don't recommend that. I place my cakes in the fridge after crumb coating and then I'm just doing the final coat here. This one on the bottom is actually a really pale, pale pink. I know it's not showing up on camera that well, but it does have a pink hue. The reason that I went with pink on the bottom here is because I'm trying to make this cake look similar to the invitation that I was given. And it had this pink speckled balloon and the different speckles were gold and there was a little bit of blue and a little bit of darker pinky purple. So I'm using some luster dust here mixed with some vodka. And whenever you're doing a splatter like this and using luster dust, all you wanna do is make sure that you up that vodka count or if you want to, you can also use a lemon extract. The reason that we use either of those is because they leave no taste behind, so it's just tasteless. And a pre-warning, anytime you're doing a splatter technique, there is bound to be some mess. So if you are working on countertops or surfaces that don't do well with that, definitely put some sort of parchment paper down. You can also do this where you kind of have those science fair boards that you can put up so that when you splatter or you airbrush, you're not getting it everywhere. Also, I am using some airbrush colors for this and I will often do this so I don't have to take my gel food coloring and add vodka or any other extract to it. And the texture is just perfect as is, and it's actually really perfect for a splatter. Then it had these little other dots on them, and I wanted to give this just a little bit more definition, so I'm adding on some sprinkles. And you'll notice that I'm chucking these sprinkles right on there. If you don't chuck the sprinkles, they don't stick that easily, so that is why I'm actually throwing it on there. So then that way I know that they're more embedded into the cake. Just a pre-warning, if you are using something like American buttercream, you're going to form a crust on that. So if you want to do that technique, you do have to do that before you put it in the fridge or let it set for too long. If you don't, then all of your sprinkles will just pop off. Then I placed both the tiers. The first tier was just kind of covered in the white and the other tier we did the splatter technique with the sprinkles and I placed those both in the fridge to set for a little bit. Now what I'm doing is I'm preparing the buttercream for the roses that are going to go on top. This is the easiest way I find to make two-toned or multiple-toned buttercream. Yes, you can do it where you just open up the bag and then you can fill it, but I always find that when I do it this way, I get a more consistent look. And because I am making flowers with this, I do want it to have a consistent look all the way around. To achieve that pink, I just added a drop of pink food coloring, and then to achieve the darker pink, I added a little bit of burgundy, a little bit of purple, and a little bit more pink as well. Whenever I make tiered buttercream cakes, I do try to leave that set in the fridge for at least 45 minutes, and I try to make sure that that fridge is relatively empty, just so that all of that cooling power is going directly into the cake. Then what I did is I put some bubble tea straws in, make sure that they're all super, super level. This is important so that you don't get any tipping or rocking on your cake. Then I have this dowel, which I used a sharpener for, and it's just a regular pencil sharpener, just to get that tip nice and sharp, and then that way it pierces into the board, and if you get any shifting while you're driving with that cake, it is not going to move. Now taking that buttercream that we prepared earlier, you can see that I'm using a tapered petal tip and I'm just kind of doing little mini rainbow arcs here. After I kind of get that center in there, which honestly isn't super, super important, you can do whatever you want in that center, I kind of swirled it around. Then it's about having even solid pressure as you're creating that little arc. And then when you want to end the arc, you stop squeezing the bag. 
You're also allowing that flower nail to do some of the work for you too because you're twisting it at the same time. Now you'll notice here that I did make a bed of frosting underneath. That is because when we wanna take it off with the scissors here, you need to be able to grab something that's not going to affect the shape of the flower. And I actually keep just building up that little mound of buttercream frosting on there to continue to do so because I'm not taking it all off when I use my scissors. And my apologies, I wasn't very diligent about how I was filming this portion, so I didn't get good shots of showing you how I put it on the cake. But it's pretty straightforward. I would just take it off with those scissors and I'd place it on. You're gonna get a little swiping of that buttercream, but there are ways to cover that up. Now you can also do it another way, which I've used before, especially when I wanna get really lifted florals or I want them to be really facing forward. Then what I do is I take little pieces of parchment paper, I put them on the flower nail, and then I build the flower on top of those parchment pieces. Then I place everything onto a cookie sheet and I place it in the freezer. I take it out after about 20 minutes and then they're able to be moved around however I see fit and you're going to get the placement just right because they're not falling apart in your hands and you don't have to mess around with the scissors. Now to get that six inch cake on top, I just lifted it up, but as you can see, I'm now having to use ribbon to cover up those little imperfections, and that really comes from using a plate. Had I used a board, I would have been able to get a much cleaner cut off of there, but I wanted to add a ribbon anyway so it works. However, if you don't want the ribbon look, then you're gonna wanna make sure that you do this on a board. Now I added a bunch of different greens to get to this tone. I added some moss green. I also added some leaf green and I added this all to the pink. I always like kind of incorporating the color of the flower into that leaf color. For some reason, it just gives it a really nice natural blend I find because it picks up on those tones. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just using a leaf tip. Now using a leaf tip is easy enough, but I will say there's a little bit of a technique to it. You do wanna make sure that you squeeze and when you pull off you kind of pull off a little bit at an angle, not so much straight off. I find when I do it straight off, then I end up with this awkward kind of ragged little cut it kind of looks like at the tips of the leaves. So you just kind of want to angle it off a little bit and swipe. Now I noticed on the invitation as well, there was all these different ways of gold being incorporated on there. So I decided to add just a little bit of gold edging to this. Now you can paint buttercream gold. It does work better I find on something like American buttercream, but you can do it on an Italian or a Swiss. I just find that you have to refrigerate it for quite a while and then just put this on quickly. And of course there is a lot of vodka in there so that it swipes really nicely. So I was allowed to do whatever I wanted with this cake. My friend didn't really have a specific request. She did mention that her party was going to be elegant, so I decided to go this route. And originally I thought I was gonna go fondant, but I was really feeling buttercream and working with buttercream while working on this. You'll also notice that, of course, I added some gold leaf on there. I felt like this cake needed it, needed that little extra bit of glamour, especially because the invitations were so beautiful and kind of like this rustic glam look. Now let's get into the pricing of this cake. This is a six inch and an eight inch cake, all completely done with Italian meringue buttercream. And the total would be $375 Canadian for a custom order only, meaning I would not just have this in stock at the bakery. But of course, if you guys watched my videos on minimums, my personal minimum right now would be sitting at $500 Canadian. So regardless of the fact that I would normally price this at $375 Canadian, the minimum would still be $500. Now let's get into the subscriber submission of the video, and this is by at sweets.by.bridget. And I know that Canadian Thanksgiving was a month ago, but I just had to share these. I'm not quite sure what the turkey legs are. I think they're some sort of nut, but first of all, it just looks delicious and adorable. And if you want to be the next subscriber submission of the video, then be sure to follow me at SD Bake Shop on Instagram, where you can either send me a photo or tag me in a photo of whatever desserts you want to share. Any and all levels welcome. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!